And if you like what you've heard this morning, I got some news for you, friend. God's Word says at least nine times that when we get to heaven, we're going to sing a new song. I, what in the world can it be? I just don't know. Oh, well. If you've been with us, we've been going through the Gospel of Matthew in particular and, and looking at uh, the parables and the stories and the teachings of our Savior. And we've gotten to the end of the, the majority of the parables there in Matthew 25 when Jesus used the uh, parable of the sheep and the goats and he wound up talking about them. And we've already preached on that, but I think we need to point out the last verse in there. In the last verse in Matthew 25, verse 46, it's, it simply says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Let's pray. Lord, it's your word. Use it to accomplish your will in the lives of all of us in this room. For your glory, your honor, your praise, because you're worthy. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There are at least 30 times in the, in the Word of God uh, uh, that you see the term eternal life, and sometimes it's reversed, life eternal. Uh, but at least 30 times you find that phrase, and another 15 times you find the phrase everlasting life. Now, what I want us to realize is that all these teachings of our Savior, in particular all these parables that we dealt with, they're all pointing to heaven. The second coming, Jesus is going to come, and we're going to leave with Him, and we're going to glory. Hallelujah. And that is, that is the primary focus of, of uh, all these chapters, 22, 23, 24, 25. And, and Jesus is trying to drive it home. And yet we still have the skeptics. We still have the folks who want to deny or doubt or, yeah, well, maybe so, you know. You like the ones over uh, in, later in the Gospels where it talks about how, well, you know, we've been hearing this a long time. Yeah, I don't care how long you've been hearing it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can bank on it. Jesus is coming again, and when he comes again, well, the, the actual rapture itself, we really haven't covered that much yet, uh, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I would like to focus your attention for just a few minutes, if I can, on where we're going. Heaven. Heaven. I don't know what you think about it. I hear different folks say different things. Sometimes I... I want to turn around and barf. It's a dumb thing some people say. And I'm serious. We got all these mixed up, crazy ideas. That, uh, people don't go to the Bible and read it. They just say, well, this feels good to me. You know, that may be what it means to you, but to me it means this. You know what? It doesn't matter what you think it means to you. It matters what God says. Now, that, when he says it, that's it. Settle in on that. Focus in on that. When he says it, then you better, well, just simply do this. Read it and believe it. That's what I would ask you to do for me. Now, let me give you a few points, if I may. I personally think that heaven's going to be an exciting place. I have told you all before, I realize I'm not an exciting preacher, but I am a very excitable preacher. I can get excited about a lot of things, catch a big fish. I can get excited over that. Watch Georgia Bulldogs score a touchdown. I can do a little hooping and hollering then. You know, I, I, I can get excited over a lot of things than I have in my life. But ain't nothing better than to start talking about heaven. What, I, don't know, I don't care what you think it is. I just want to show you what it is. Are you ready? Heaven. Well, now, first of all, did you catch the, the, the phrases I just referenced you to? Eternal life or life eternal everlasting life you know what that right there means in itself man right there you can stop and just have a hallelujah day it will never end oh did y'all catch that never end have any of y'all ever had to say goodbye to somebody you love i'm not talking about death I'm talking about just say you have to say goodbye they're going across the country going overseas they're 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 moving someplace else, and you, you're, you're sad because you're having to say goodbye. Y'all know I like old movies, and I like many of the new ones, but I do the old ones. And I, I, don't, I don't know the name of the movie. I don't remember who the actors were in it. Some old movie, probably in the 40s. And it was a Western. Of course, that's kind of like best. And uh, uh, in this old Western, 
there was a, a young lady who had just met the, light, the man of her life. She was falling in love. And it was toward the end of the movie. And uh, her and the guy she had fallen in love with were fixing to head west. You know, they all headed west. Going to head west. Into the sunset, they're going to march anyway. Uh, and they were fixing to head west. And they had the old wagon out there. And this, this young man and this young lady were loading up the wagon with what few things they had. And they were fixing to get in that wagon and, and head west. And she was standing there saying goodbye to her mama and daddy. And they were elderly. And she was talking to them. She said, you know, now when we get out there and we get settled down and we got a place, I'm going to write you and I'm going to let you know where we're at so you can come. So you can come visit with us. You can come. And I'll never forget. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a little bit of an emotional kind of guy. I mean, you know, I, I cry, okay? And, um, and this young lady was talking to her mom and daddy about, oh, y'all can come, y'all can see us. We, we, you know, we'll, we'll look for you. And the old man in his wisdom looked at his daughter and he said, Honey, we're old. We can't make that trip. We'll probably never see you again. But I love you. And you'll have a good life. My stars, I squalled. I mean, they, they were saying goodbye forever. You know, these folks on the movies, they both of them, most of them, most of the time, don't believe in God and hereafter. They just, you know, we're going to, bye, it's over, bye, you know, all that junk. Here, whoa, I got news for you. When we get to glory, when we get to walk on those streets of gold in heaven, I got a tip for you. It ain't never going to end. Woo! That right there in itself, just realize no more sad goodbyes. That'll be good. Of course, you know, all those other things. And this sermon is not about the land of no more. That's a whole sermon in itself. No more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tear, no more sea. I ain't figured that one out yet. And, and all, all this stuff that ain't going to be there no more. You know, and well, here we're seeing that heaven is going to never end. Oh, now you, you understand where we're going. I ain't got this, this. If you want this, you need to write this down. Heaven is not described here completely in the bulletin. If you go into the book of Revelation, you realize that heaven is a place that is uh, square. Not dull, but square. And, and, and it's four square. That's, that's the word that's in the King James Version. And it says that there are all these furlongs winds up being 1,500 miles. Do you know how far 1,500 miles is? And when you start talking about this now, 1,500 miles from Jacksonville, Florida to Seattle, Washington is about a little less than 3,000 miles. You're over halfway to Washington State before you've gone 1,500 miles. Now, the New Jerusalem, the heaven that we're talking about, is 1,500 miles this away, 1,500 miles that away, and 1,500 miles that away. Square. And you say, oh, well, yeah, that's a pretty good sized place. You know, all these folks are going to get to heaven. How many, you know, is it going to be crowded? Did you know, I remember several years ago listening to a preacher preach. Of course, you know what you think about preachers and whether or not they're telling the truth. Um, but I listened to a preacher preach, and he said, you could take everybody that lives in the world, and you could stand them inside the city limits of Jacksonville, Florida. Everybody in the world. Well, I was doing some reading, backing up, and trying to make sure I got my figures straight. And I found out something this week that I didn't know that other preacher was talking about or whatever. But I found out the city of Jacksonville is something like 875 square miles. 875 square miles. New York City is like 302 square miles. But the material that I read this last week said that you could take everybody in the world, now, I don't care if you're talking about China, India, Russia, America, South America, where, all the humans in the world, and you could literally stand them up inside the city limits of New York City. Be kind of close quarters. I think they're in close quarters already. But wait a minute. And heaven's going to be 1,500 miles this away, this away, and that away. It's going to be a big enough place, I'll assure you. But never ending when we get there. Never ending. Now, I got another one for you. Y'all know I relate to this. I really haven't figured myself out. I confess there are some things about Daryl Quinn I wonder about. Well, some things I even worry about. But I got to tell you one. I, have you ever heard the little phrase, 
or the question, do you eat to live or do you live to eat? Now, I must confess I have a problem with that question. I resemble having a problem with that question. I understand that. But that's all right. Let me tell you a secret, friend. It's okay. When I get to glory, I will never be hungry again. Did y'all know that? I know people, people joke and laugh and cut up and go, nah, you know, yeah, I ain't really the way it is. You know, I've already covered a couple of these parables in here, Matthew. And we looked at the one, you know, where there was the uh, uh, marriage of the king's son back in Matthew 22. And uh, there was a feast prepared. He said he had a feast prepared and invited everybody to it. And then in uh, Luke chapter 14, there is another one. It's called the parable of the great supper where Jesus said there's going to be a great supper. The guy's going to have a big deal, big feast, big get together. And he's going to invite all these folks. Well, that's another one that's a big deal. And I know it's those two are parables. And some people say, well, you know, those parables, I kind of question them. Well, you can question them all you want to, but how about this one? In Luke chapter 22, Jesus is talking to the disciples about the Lord's Supper and having the Lord's Supper with the disciples before the crucifixion. And in Luke chapter 22, verses 15 through 16, Jesus said to the disciples, Take, eat, because I will not eat of this again until I eat it with you in the kingdom of God. Do you understand what Jesus was declaring? He was making a statement and partake of the Lord's Supper the, that, that they were having. He said, because I'm not going to eat with you again until we eat together in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ himself was declaring that he would be eating in the future. Oh, no. Wait a okay. Some people have a question about that. Let me, Revelation chapter 21 and 22 is where you can go and read about heaven, okay? You can go and you read about streets of gold, walls of jasper, uh, gates of pearl, all those descriptive terms that are wow, and, and that's where you find out how big the place is. You read all that, and in there that you know it says that up there is, that there is a fountain that's flowing from the throne of God. That's the fountain of the water of life. And he said, there we will get a drink of that fountain. We'll never get thirsty again either. And we'll have the water from the fountain of life, and Jesus will give us some of that drink. And there at that city, there's going to be all those descriptive terms that are there listed and the series can you imagine walls of jasper you know what jasper is i looked it up i ain't sure i can describe it after reading it, it, it it's, it's kind of some uh orange and brown and, and and some some green and some gold but it does say it's all mixed together it, it, it's like a a beautiful shining jewel that is multicolored. jasper walls the walls are that color doesn't sound like the old plain white walls to me. No, 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 no. The walls of that place are beautiful. Wait a minute. You can't get past the streets of gold. I know, but I'm going to say it. Please take it to the bank. Write it down. If a bunch of Georgia crackers, and that's what Georgias are known as from back in the days when they used whips to pop uh, behind the mules that drug the carts. They were known as whip crackers. And from the, uh, from the terminology that's used by a bunch of Georgia crackers, and we're uh, in our dumbness have an ability to put gold on the roof of a building in Atlanta, Georgia. Ooh, you think God can't put gold on the street? I have a problem with you. Yeah. Well, now, wait a minute. In that view, do you know what's going to be there? That, that fountain that's flowing, that river crystal clear that's running down uh, through the middle of town. And do you know what's on either side? You know this, but think about what you know. I bet you haven't even consciously considered what you know. There are fruit trees, right? It's Revelation 22. There are fruit trees in glory. On either side of the, the, the place there. And they good ones. They bear fruit every month. Not just once a year. According to the Bible, every month. Now, for those of you who are skeptical and want to sit in here and doubt what the preacher is saying, and you want to go off from here and just have your own opinion, you think, well, that preacher just takes things too literally, you know. you got to watch out for that preacher. Let me ask you a question. 
Why do you have a fruit, fruit tree? What good is a fruit tree? You eat the fruit. I know. There's some of you like the color, you're just the orange is hanging there in their beauty of an orange. Or the lemon and that yellow bright hanging there in the leaves of that green tree. Or the strawberries on the ground or the whatever. I got news for you, friend. That fruit ain't no good if you can't eat it. You're going to enjoy it. What kind of fruit? Now that I don't know. Maybe you got a preference and maybe I got a preference. But we're going to be there. And we're going to have all this and fruit. To, but now wait a minute. And this really is something a lot of you have been around when I'd preach a funeral for one person or another. And you realize I trust that my deep, deep-seated conviction in my soul is that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord if you're a Christian. And when we breathe our last on this earth, I am deeply convicted that there's a couple of angels hanging around. And when we take that last breath, those angels usher us to glory. And we get to be with Jesus. We, but now... 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, And we shall see him, and we shall know him, for we shall be like him. I'm going to be like Jesus. <laughs> Pop show <shut up>, bubble. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be like Jesus. And, and we get up there, hold on, I know something about Jesus. When that says that over back in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, it's over toward the end of the book, just before you get to Revelations, you know. You're way over there, things have done happened and all. But, but Jesus has already been to the cross. Jesus has already been in the grave. He's already come up out of the grave. He is in his resurrected body, and we're learning that we're going to be like him. Well, to go back to Luke chapter 24, and you read that powerful teaching there about how the disciples were gathered together in that upper room, and they were just all, oh, no, what's happened, what's happened? You know, they killed him three days ago and now he's gone we don't know where they've taken him and all of a sudden there he was yeah y'all come with me when we get to glory we're gonna sit down in a big screen room and tell God play that over. I want to see Peter James and John's faces whenever Jesus all of a sudden he's there and they jump back they got class they scared you talk about a horror movie they got scared big time and said ghosts ghosts it's a spirit and Jesus walks in there and says whoa he starts talking he starts talking to him. He said, Peace, look at me. Reach over here. Touch me. Does a ghost or a spirit, depending on which translation you're reading, does a ghost or a spirit have flesh and blood and bones? And they reach over and they could touch him. He said, Look at me. See the scars? See the scars? And he, I think maybe they would still have this look of doubt. Y'all have been around folks, just ain't gonna believe nothing. I think they still had this look of doubt on their face. You know, you you a spirit. You you dead, we know you dead. You a spirit. And he looks over on the table. They have, they've had some eating all going on there. And he sees that there's some broiled fish. He said, give me a piece of that fish. And he ate it. Give me some of that honey. And he ate it. I'm going to be like him. I'm going to have one thing different. I'm going to ask for fried. You have whatever you want up there, okay? But now, hold on, please hear me. Well, I'm telling you that some of the things about heaven that are worth rejoicing over is it will not end. It will be for eternity. And the next thing is we're going to be able to, I mean, the Bible is absolutely filled with God encouraging the people who follow him to enjoy their times of feasting together from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. I know it does talk about fasting. That's in there. But I'm just talking about eating this morning. Well, what, what more do you want? What more do you want? Oh, how about this? Well, you know, I believe in heaven. We go there. But I don't know. You know, we don't really know each other. Are we really? I mean, you know, we'll, we'll be there and we'll have us a, a fish burger or something, you know. And we'll just mess around. No, no, no. You remember when they went on the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew chapter 17, the first seven verses of Scripture. Jesus went up on that mountain. He took Peter, James, and John with him, got up on top of that mountain, and there was a cloud settled in over him, and all of a sudden there was a voice. 
And then Peter, James, and John looked up, and boom, that was a couple of spirits then. Uh -huh. It was Elijah. Man, everything I know about Elijah, I like. He is a man of men. And he, he'd call fire down from heaven, and 450 fake preachers would kick the bucket. And he, he'd be out there, he'd even call fire down from, a, from heaven on 51 soldiers, and then 51 more come up there. He called fire there. The third group of 51 come up there, and that captain looks up there and says, Oh, sir, we know you are a man of God, and we know that you're uh, uh, from the Lord, but we're going to ask you, would you please spare our lives? Because <laughs> they knew he was from God, and God gives power. A lot. Can you imagine? Man. Elijah and Moses were on that mountaintop with Jesus. And Peter, James, and John knew it. What about in John chapter 11? Y'all know the story, the one about Lazarus. Whenever he, he called back from the grave, Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Y'all know that story. But did you know that before Jesus got to the tomb, Martha is the one that met him. Now, we always like Mary better because Mary cared more about spiritual things than Martha. But on that day, it was Martha that went to Jesus first. And Martha got to Jesus. Did you look at that? Master, if you'd have just come sooner. If you'd have just come sooner. And Jesus looked said, Martha, don't you know I am the resurrection and the life? Yes, Lord. And here's, the, here's what you need to understand. Martha looked at Jesus and said, yes, Lord, I know that my brother will rise in the resurrection. She was already well taught in the teaching that there will be a life. We will rise again, and we're going to come alive from the grave. And Martha said, yes, Lord, I know that he'll rise in the, in the resurrection. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And that's when he walked out there and called him up and said, Lazarus, come forth. And y'all know why he hollered loud. He said it with a loud voice. So that all the rest of them, John Doe's wouldn't come out. Yeah, he called him by name, Lazarus, Lazarus. But one of my favorite teachings about knowing each other is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses 13 through 18. And I want to read this one to you. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and following. Brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, he won't do the shouting. The angel's going to do the shouting. He's going to shout, come up here. And with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, you know, that's going to be a good day for, for us. That shout's going to take place. We are going to disappear, leave, gone. And we're going to meet our loved ones in the air. If they're saved, we'll meet them in the air. And we'll know them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we will know them. Oh, my. With them. Can you see it? Can you see yourself in the clouds of glory meeting those loved ones who have died before us as Christians? That's going to be a good day. That's going to be a good day. Oh, yes. Well, we will know each other. We'll not only know those great Old Testament saints. Oh, man, can you imagine what it's going to be like to meet Samson? I know. That's where all the women will be. I'm going to see this guy. You know, I, I, huge, long, flowing hair. I mean, you know, that's what caught him. Anyway, uh, we, we're going to see all this. We're going we're gonna to meet. Can you imagine meeting King David? Oh, yes. It's going to be a good day. Good day. He, Moses parted the river and said, here we go. Elijah. 
I, I, I'm, y'all follow me. I'm going to ask that boy some questions. What was it like riding on that chariot? I mean, you know, I have on an occasion when I knew a nut, and a nut asked me to get in the car with him. We was up on Interstate 16. We did go over 100 miles an hour, and uh, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I was, I was sitting in that car watching the, the post go by. But wait a minute, what in the world do you think it was like to get on the chariot that God sent? Chariot of fire and wheels turning and all that going on. Hey, just doubt it if you want to. Get to heaven, meet Elijah and ask him, well, now what was it really like? What was it really like? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We'll get to see those saints of old. I'm going to get to see my granddaddy. Yeah. Joffrey, well, you up here in the booth, thank you. I, I was granddaddy's favorite grandson. <laughs> I don't know that. Me and him were close, though. Me and him were close. I told you just a few weeks ago about his last request. I always gave him a pocket knife for Christmas for the last several years after I got old enough to have a job. I can still remember the Thanksgiving of 1971 when I asked him, I said, Granddaddy, what you want for Christmas? I expected him to say a pocket knife. He looked at me and said, go to church with me. Okay. So as a 21-year-old fella, I came from Warner Robins and went to the Hopewell Methodist Church with my granddaddy. Sat next to him during church. And that June he died. Yeah. Going to see you. Who are you going to see? Wait a minute, wait a minute, hear me well. Don't waste your time thinking you got plenty of it. Young people die every day. Accidents happen. Cancer comes calling. We have no guarantees about tonight, much less tomorrow. Why waste your time? Get ready. Get ready. There's coming a day when your name's going to be called. But now what you want to do is you want to be so ready that when that name gets called, you'll know where you're going. You'll know who you're going to see. Ah. I look forward to seeing Ted White. Ted White's that Marine friend of mine in Dodge County that got shot in the neck the day Nixon was signed in as president of the U.S. over in Vietnam. Ted White's a guy who was honest as day as way well, just honest to the core. He drank a beer every now and then. He really liked playing poker, penny ante. It was just fun. But I'll never forget the last time I saw Ted alive. It was in the driveway at his house there in Greston. Me and Susan and Ted and his wife were standing there. Susan and I were fixing to leave, come back down here. Ted had found out the week before that he had cancer. He'd been paralyzed from his armpits down ever since he got shot in the neck. And I remember witnessing to Ted several times over the years. But on that day, I'd looked him in the face and I told him standing there in the driveway, Ted, I want you to call me sometime and I want to pick up the phone. I want to hear you say, you did it. And by that I meant he did it what it takes to be saved. My witnessing to him was that you know you need to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins and be your Savior. And Ted, I want to hear you say, you did it. His son, Ron, before we had the funeral, Ron talked to me and said, Brother Gerald, I didn't stay with Daddy every night in the hospital while he was fighting that cancer up in Macon, but he said, I'd go up there just about every day. He said, I went into that hospital room with, Ted, with his daddy. He said, he sat down next to the bed. He said, his daddy rolled over and looked at him from that bed. He said, son, I did it. Ron didn't know what he was talking about. He said, what'd you do, Dad? What'd you do? I did what Brother Darrell said to do. I asked Jesus to forgive me and be my Savior. Oh, that was a good day. That was a good day. 
and I'm sitting on that little boat down off of St. Simon's Island or in a creek, and I was fishing by myself, and my phone, my cell phone rang, and I picked it up, and I could tell that woman was crying on the other end, but I couldn't, I couldn't even tell what she was saying. And finally, I said, I, I, I hear you, but I can't understand you. you got to talk clearer. And finally, she got her composure, and she said, Daryl, this is Winnell. And I just want you to know, Ted did it. I could have walked on the water of that creek. He did it. Have you done it? You know what's fixing to happen? I'm going to see some of my grandparents. Ken Carter. I'm going to see Billy Graham. George Arms. I'm going to see Abraham and right down the line. But I'm going to tell y'all something. <laughs> I wish I could sing. Don't y'all wish I could sing? What Danny Jones said to me a while ago, we were standing around when, when someone of y'all was up here practicing, Danny looked at me and said, I wish I could sing. And he looked at me and said, I wish you could sing too. <laughs> and, and then he looked at me and he said, yeah, if we could sing, we'd sing a duet, wouldn't we? I said, and he said, not in this lifetime. <laughs> but you know, we're going to see him who died. You ever had anybody love you enough that they were willing to die for you? 